Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Richard Beck. It's my YouTube channel, Beck's Armory. And in this video, I'm making a custom backplate for my brand new adjustable three jaw chuck. So, I've already made the uh, center section in the previous videos. You can go back and check those out. And at this point, I need to make this flat ring that I can weld on to the center hub and uh, finish it off. And that's gonna allow me to attach my new chuck to my really old lathe. So my lathe is um, 80 years old and it has uh, proprietary, not proprietary, but two by 10 threads, which nobody makes a backplate. Now you can see I just busted my uh, arbor here. I had welded it previously because it was constantly slipping. Uh, I really hate this chuck. It's like the worst chuck in the world. It's a cheapo. I need to get a new one. So it was what I did. I welded it a lot stronger. And I know I shouldn't be welding this, but trust me, I don't care because I hate this drill chuck. It's going to go in the trash eventually. For now, I just welded it back up. So originally, I was just going to plasma cut this hole, right? But this is kind of a machining video, so I figured, hey, let's stick to machining and let's try to actually cut this hole with a hole saw and then I'm going to bore it out. That's my thought process. Well, you can see how I'm hanging on <laughs> just putting a crazy amount of pressure. Well, I strip out the threads um, on this hole saw. So the arbor and the hole saw interface where they come together, that's threaded. And uh, right there, you see the arbor stop, but the, or you see the hole saw stop, but the chuck continue to move. So that's completely destroyed. Um, so I had no other choice to but to turn to the trusty plasma table. So I went in the house. I drew up this uh, plate in Inventor, and uh, you can see here I'm you know just finalizing the feeds and speeds. And what I had forgotten was that this plate is not a half inch thick. This plate is actually three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm about to have another fail here. You can see, hey, it's cutting great right now. Um, but eventually, on the second half, you'll see the sparks transition to the top side of the plate instead of the bottom side of the plate. So this is a really bad thing because cutting through steel is one thing. Cutting through three quarters of an inch of dross is extremely hard. So I had to go back and turn the plasma cutter way down, super slow, to actually punch through three quarter inch of dross on half of a circle. So that was a bit of a pain. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, but I like to leave my uh, bloopers in the video so you can see that, hey, I'm just like you. I make constant mistakes in the shop, but hey, so this is where the video should have started, you know, me plasma cutting the hole, but I didn't. So you can see some sparks here. That's because when you plasma cut, the actual plasma cut face is incredibly hard steel. Um, but eventually I cut through that. So here I am just putting some tacks on the hub that I made. I really should have, hindsight being 2020, put three tacks equally spaced, um, but I didn't. So yeah, this did twist a tiny bit, but you'll see later on in the video, I'm actually going to turn both sides on the lathe front and back. Um, so is what I did, I made the center hub first. Now I the idea here is I'm going to thread that hub onto the spindle and do all of the final machining with it on the spindle. So that's going to give me, you know, flatness, parallel, all those, you know, nice features that are good to have in a back plate. So here I'm just welding it up. Now the center hub is 4140, um, which or otherwise known as chromoly steel. It's a great universal steel. Um, and the outside plate is just mild steel, hot rolled steel. So I'm using stainless TIG wire here. Uh, 308L is what I'm using. That's just what I was taught when welding uh, uh, 4140. If you've got something better, let me know. Um, but yeah so with the stainless wire you get a really strong joint and uh, supposedly it's the best option for welding tool steel together or tool steel to mild steel anyways the shop I came from they always use stainless TIG wire when they're welding on 4140 so like I said 
let me know if you got something better. Also, guys, I know what the analytics are for lathe videos on my channel. So if you're still watching and you enjoy lathe videos, please uh, give me a shout out in the comments saying I'm still here because lathe videos on my channel go over like a lead balloon. But hey, I enjoy working on the lathe, so I'm making this video anyways. <laughs> but hey, if you want to see more videos like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment because YouTube absolutely does not promote these videos. Um, so anyways, I'm making these because I enjoy uh, the process. So uh, basically, I make a couple more passes here, but you've already watched me weld for about 30 seconds, so there's no point in continuing. Just imagine me doing this same thing like three more times. One other thing, this is a 150 amp TIG torch. I nearly melted the thing down because I've got the welder maxed out 200 amps and I've got the pedal mashed to the floor. So I really should upgrade. All right, so I started out just doing this by hand because this uh, type of interrupted cut on a lathe that isn't crazy rigid like mine, I was a little skeptical. So I, I played with it a little bit. When I got my confidence up, I started using the power feed and it really sped up the process. Eventually, I put it into low gear. Uh, right now, you can see it says, you know, 400 RPMs. Once I switch this thing over to low gear, um, you'll see, I don't know if I have the camera on anymore at that point, but it says like, you know, I don't know, in the thousands or something, because I'm in the low range. At that point, I was able to take 60 thousandths cuts um, with about a seven inch diameter. So I've discovered low gear is very good for uh, applications like this. So at this point, I am just removing the threads, some of the threads, about a half inch of threads from this end First of all, they're not needed. The spindle doesn't isn't that long, but this will also allow me to unthread it and then thread it on backwards. And in that way, in that case, I'll be able to machine the backside. I wasn't gonna machine the backside, but at this point in the process, um, I had a thick spot on the back plate that was making it vibrate just a little bit. Now I'm only gonna go to probably 2,000 RPMs, but still, um, I have the ability to make it perfect. So why not do that? So at this point, I am just turning uh, the ID to two, thou two inches, one thou, so I have a perfect slip fit that'll give me the concentricity, and then I flip it over and I machine the back side. So there it is, it's flipped over, and at this point, I'm just going to machine off the weld. So at the end of the day, this is gonna look like it was one piece not even going to know that it was a, a hub welded onto a piece of plate. Um, you can see when I hit that stainless, it is hard. I don't know why it got that hard. It may have work hardened or it might have been some interaction with the 4140 and the stainless during the welding process. But uh, machining off that weld was seriously hard. And 4140 is just stringy. So yeah, right there, you can see. Um, I've got a carbide insert. So I just gave it all she had. Um, they're cheap carbide inserts. I destroyed a couple. No big deal. Um, like I said, I don't have a lot of money in those carbide inserts. But they do work pretty well, even on some hard stuff. So at this point, I'm just cleaning it up. We're getting real close to the end. Um, so here, I just put the chuck on and I adjusted it. Um, and then I'm going to use a transfer punch just to... Uh, give myself a reference as to where those three hold down screws are. So now I'm just transfer punching some center center marks and then I'm going to go drill and tap those. Um, and the location of these is not super critical because it's how this adjustable three jaw chuck works. It works like a four jaw chuck um, on that center boss. So you adjust the run out and then you tighten these screws that I'm putting threaded holes in for now. So I only filmed one of these because, well, I filmed all three, but I'm not gonna be guys, I'm not gonna make you guys watch all three. It's the same thing, just twice more. So anyways, overall, um, I'm really happy with how things turned out. There we go, guys. It's all so I left it a little big um, in case I get a, uh, a larger chuck, like a six inch chuck. Um, I may be able to reuse this back plate, um, but yeah, super excited. So just to recap, these set screws here in the back allow you 
to adjust the run out of this three jaw scroll chuck to zero. Um, so the great thing is, is you can chuck a piece, uh, adjust it for that specific diameter, unchuck it, rechuck it, and you still have the same amount of run out. You can flip it over, stick it back in, still have the same amount of run out. So that is what is so amazing about adjustable three jaw chucks. So I am super, super happy. Um, basically this gives you the precision of a four jaw chuck, but with a three and the speed of a three jaw scroll chuck. So if you're considering one of these, don't hesitate. It's worth it. Especially if you have a modern lathe where you can just buy the back plate. I had to make the back plate. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, give me a thumbs up, guys. It really helps, and I really appreciate it. Leave me a comment if you have any questions, and I will get back to you because I answer all the comments on my YouTube channel.